How's it? Today we're going to create an animated character for a movie poster. I'll learn a lot about graphic design and how to apply that in Illustrator uh, and some really creative uh, ways to show movie poster font, for example, on the bottom here, and to create a vectors for our characters. Now, uh, we're going to use a design uh, rule called root to rectangle. And it's a basic um, method in terms of getting a good uh, eye line in terms of what the eye sees on the poster to attract the eye. Uh, a lot of movie posters use this. For example, you'll notice that the same um, uh, text here is at the bottom part. Um, and there's a calculation that is used to get the root to rectangle. And we're going to uh, establish that in our guides. So this is the movie poster that we're going to be making. We're going to create a new uh, character. And if you don't know, uh, Mr. Men. Um, Mr. Men is a really creative uh, characters that have um, a book, children's book, and uh, there's a lot of different examples that you could choose for Mr. Men. For example, there's Mr. Happy, Mr. Tickle, Mr. Noisy, and you're not going to choose the same ones, you're going to make your own. Um, in my case, I chose uh, a popsicle and call him Mr. Drip. So if, don't call him like Mr. Popsicle if he has, he has a popsicle. Do something that uh, describes him or a characteristic or an emotion. Okay, uh, so for example, this is the movie post we're going to make, and at the bottom we have our root to rectangle. So uh, we're going to hit Command N to create a new um, A4 uh, RGB 72 because we're not going to print it, uh, PPI in the advanced mode. Uh, you're going to name it, you can name it Mr. Men uh, if it's going to be in that category, and hit OK. Okay. And so we're going to start our root to rectangle. So we're going to use the line tool. So click on the line tool and go to the top left corner and click and hold down and hold down shift and it'll create a straight line for us and go all the way down to the edge. Okay. And go ahead and stroke that like any color, like a black, one point's fine. Hit V uh, to select it and there we go. We got our um, square or our, we're going to make a square. Uh, go ahead and go to the uh, rectangle tool and draw a box around and make sure that the top left and top right corners match to make two uh, symmetrical rectangles. And again, stroke anything is fine. Now on the bottom part, um, basically what happens is, is we're going to have a line that's going to come here and it's going to start out here and curl upwards. Okay, It just helps us in making our uh, design alignment. So we're going to use our pen tool for that, P for pen. Click on the bottom left corner, okay? Click on that this corner right here and hold it down and uh, drag your mouse up so you get this little curve point right here. And hit V for Victor and now we have our root to rectangle. And again this uh, area is going to be used for our text and this is going to be used for our design. Uh, so you're going to highlight all of those lines that we made, then we're going to go to view, guides, and then we're going to go to make guides. So now there are guides, and we have those as a, as a layer guides if we ever want to hide them quickly. Um, we're going to make a new layer, and we're going to call this um, Mr. Min, and we're going to create our character now. So we're going to create our character in this box right here. Um, now again, you may not be a good drawer, like I'm not good at drawing things, um, maybe you are. So sometimes I got to get help from uh, see the object first before uh, I can do it. So for example, I'm not good at drawing popsicle sticks, so I'm, I just found this popsicle stick right here. So what I'm going to do is um, kind of recreate this, um, not necessarily exactly copy, but copy my own way. I'm going to use the rounded rectangle, you know, to get this sort of shape, okay? And again, I, I want to lock that picture so uh, when I select, it doesn't uh, get in the way. Um, and then I'm going to choose a color. Now, when you choose your uh, color scheme for your uh, Mr. Man and your designs, you're, you don't want to just start uh, adding colors right away. And you're going to want to go to Cooler. Um, if you just search cooler, we're going to use adobecooler.com uh, and create our color scheme uh, for our character and designs. 
So for example, if you don't like purple and you don't want to do purple, I wouldn't choose a grapes uh, for your character color purple. Uh, go to complementary. We're going to use a complementary system here. Uh, what's going to happen is, for example, if I want green, okay, uh, right here for my uh, popsicle, um, then that means my designs, and I'll sh the designs, what I mean is uh, the designs around it, see here there's purple, um, those are the colors that I would use, okay? So you, you want to uh, move this circle around and get the color um, that you feel like, hey, th this is a color scheme that I want to work with. Uh, you can click on these uh, right here. The middle one is going to be your base color. Uh, this is going to be the color that will go um, like in this rectangle area that will mesh well with the other colors. So it's going to be more neutral. Uh, you want to make sure that dot is somewhere around here in the middle. What you're going to use is these RGB colors at the bottom. You're going to uh, use these uh, numbers for your colors. For, for example, here I've, uh, I'm going to use this as my green, uh, 62, 120, 56. So when I design my color here, um, so my color here, I'm going to get the color palette. So uh, I'm going to use these uh, three uh, color codes, 62, 125, 56. So I'm going to enter them in in the color here. So 62, tab 125, and 56. And now I got the color uh, that I need for that. Now I'm going to manipulate a little bit so it looks a little bit more realistic of the popsicle, not just a square. So I'm going to hit the A. And then I can uh, take these lines, you know, and bring them in a little bit if I want to, more like a popsicle. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to need to get my sticks. I'm just going to put them around there. And then I'm going to uh, duplicate those. And then I'm going to rotate a little bit. All right, uh, now the stroke is a little distracting, so I'm going to go ahead and take out the stroke. You can leave the stroke if you want, it just depends on uh, the look and how it goes. Okay, so I don't need that. I'm going to unlock all, and I'm going to delete this uh, picture because I don't need that anymore. Um, and then you can just arrange it to how you want it to look. And then I'm going to actually uh, click on these feet. I'm going to color them more brown so they look more like feet. I'm going to send it to the back. Um, now, I'm going to be a little bit more creative and uh, make it look like uh, someone took a bite out of them. And again, uh, try to zoom in as much as you can. Uh, don't just have it zoomed out. So I'm going to use the P for pen tool. I'm going to click here, click here. You know what? Click here, click here. I got someone made a big bite out of him. And then make sure you close it right here from where you started. Hit V, click on that shape, click on, hold down the shift key, click on that shape. Uh, go to Window Pathfinder, your Pathfinder tool, and we're going to subtract the shape, the second one. Okay, so there we subtracted it. And now it looks like someone took a bite out of him. Um, now all I need to do is uh, make some eyes. I'm going to do this really quick because they're just eyes. Um, choose a color that I want. So I got two eyes. I'm going to be bulging them out of this head. Um, and of course I need a mouth. He's going to be like, oh. And there we go. So we're going good. So my character is good. Now, you want to add some lighting effects to him. Just like this character. I really like this character. Notice it has like shading. You pretend like the lighting source is coming from up here and it's casting like little shadows and lighting. So notice how it's darker here. And um, also some lighter spots. See, there's a little bit light here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to show you how to, an easy way to do this. All you do is hit, uh, click on one of the objects, command C, command F as in frog, and then you're going to do that again. Um, but before you do that, uh, change your color slightly. So maybe I'll have a little bit of a darker tone. Um, 
Maybe I don't want it that dark. And then Command F, Command, sorry, Command C, Command F, duplicate that again. And now I'm going to um, move that top layer. And it, you can just hit that black because it, we're going to be erasing uh, this section right here. So I'm going to hit this black and then uh, I'm going to decide what I want. So I'm going to have this highlight effect right here at the bottom. So I'll show you what that will do. So you click this, hold on shift key and click the other layer and then you can go ahead and with the pathfinder again um, you're going to choose minus and now notice that um, it's a little bit of a highlight effect. Now this is a little bit too distracting, too much of a contrast. So I'm actually going to change that a little bit. Uh, if you want to change things more slightly, um, click on the original color. Again, I can just hit I and then click on the same color and then I can just go in here to my color guides and just change it more slightly uh, so it's not as you know it's more natural you know so and I can do the same thing um, with my feet um, so again I would group these command C command F maybe change the color a little bit uh, command C command F um, black uh, move those to the side a little bit. It wouldn't make sense to put them down here, uh, the reflection, because that's not much to work with. So I'm going to do it there. Uh, hold on shift key, select the other one, V minus, and there we go. So you see that it has a little bit of a highlight there. And I could do the same thing to this one too if I wanted. Okay, so um, if you want to do a lighter effect, you know, you see here it's darker. If you want to do a lighter effect, you know, like it's shining on his head. Um, again, same thing, Command C, Command F. Uh, and now this time I'm going to choose a little bit of a lighter color. Okay. And then Command C, Command F, black. And then uh, I'm actually going to move this right here. And what I want is just this highlighted. I'm going to hit A, and then I'm going to move this over here so that it only gets uh, that part. Like I only want this top. I don't want these other sides highlighted out. Okay, so V, hold on the shift key, select that other layer, and hit the minus. And now notice we have a little bit of a highlight, uh, but you can't see it too much, so I might um, maybe go a little bit brighter and then I can actually move this across if I wanted to uh, to make it a little bit more realistic okay so you can decide how you want to do your maybe top lighting effects and again you can do on the bottom the sides you just gotta see what works the best for this now what we're gonna do is create an outline of their character uh, with a stroke. So you're going to highlight um, all your character, Command G, and then Command C, Command F, that which duplicates it and pastes it exactly in the same place. Uh, you're going to go and get your stroke window, so window, uh, stroke, and with your stroke, uh, <clears throat> so with your stroke, we're actually going to um, go ahead and stroke this the color that you want. Uh, I'm just going to do a gray. Actually, don't stroke it yet. We need to combine it. Um, so you're going to select everything, and then in your uh, Pathfinder, choose the first one, Unite. That'll unite everything. Okay. And now we can uh, stroke it. And so the, the fill-in color doesn't matter. You won't see that, but you will see the stroke. So in this case, um, just choose a color that will mesh well with your settings. Again, I'm going to choose a really thick stroke and when you do your stroke go to your stroke and um, click here align stroke on the outside and here you can choose your weight of how much you want it to be and then you can click and uh, command shift left bracket and put it behind your character so now notice um, it's kind of a stroke and uh, it's up to you I mean it all depends on your character uh, how well you want it stroked if you think it's too much of a stroke um, you can just uh, pull it down. So I might pull it down a little bit 
and then left bracket. So yeah, maybe something more like that. So now we're making uh, characters a little bit more realistic, especially in terms of lighting. Okay. Um, so we have our character now. Uh, we're going to have our little rectangle um, behind him. And again, this is my square. So when I use my rectangle tool, now make sure you uh, save some space for your designs. And you can change your rectangle and the size of your guy later. Um, and make sure you group um, your guy. So let me group him before I forget. Highlight them all, Command G, and I grouped him. And now I'm going to put in <clears throat> my rectangle right here. And the rectangle is going to go behind him. So I can actually hit Command X and create a new layer, put that layer uh, behind Mr. Men, and I can put this um, back rectangle. And then I can paste that right in there and choose the color that I wanted. And again, um, right about there is pretty good. And I, I would choose, uh, remember, we. Uh, in cooler, we had a color here, so I'm going to use that color, 201, 79, and so on. So, um, I guess something more like that. Save time. I'm just going to use that. Uh, and again, you don't really, you don't really need a stroke unless there's not much of a difference uh, between it. So again, I need to get my like that. <clears throat> and maybe I will add a little bit of a stroke just to make it a little bit more defined, more subtle though. Okay. And then I can even drop my stroke down a little bit more. So it's just a faint stroke. Now we're going to use active space. Um, and active space means uh, when you have your character, Mr. Men, he's going to be coming kind of off the screen like this. Okay. You don't want him boxed in. Okay. It's kind of like a. Uh, portrait and he feels trapped. Active space is where he's kind of off the um, screen. And he's going to be the main character, so I'm going to make him a little bit bigger um, so he dominates the this background here. And notice how, at least on two sides, he needs to be coming off the edge. I mean, not like this, you know, but... Um, and again, it all depends on the kind of character you have. If you have a very wide character, it's going to be a little bit more challenging, but I'm sure you can um, do it. So I have my character here, so I'm good with that. Um, so I'm going to go back to my back rectangle here, and I'm going to apply an effect. You're going to go to Effect and Photoshop Effects. I'm going to choose Artistic, and I'm going to choose, whew, let's go with Film Grade. So when I choose my Film Grade, okay, you can choose the grain and how much highlight um, on the right side and once you get something that you want to work with you hit OK. You can try these other artistic ones but just make sure you see a change. Some of them you won't notice much of a change at all. Just whatever looks the best uh, on your character. So again that's effect, artistic, um, film grade um, and again you can play around with uh, different colors. And Now for mine um, it's more subtle because of a very, uh, well, I like this, plastic wrap, let's try that. Yeah, I like it. Okay. So, now we're going to have a little bit of a text. Um, again, his name is Mr. Drip. And, uh, I'm going to choose a font that I will, um, comfortable. It has to be more of a thick, uh, font though. Uh, more prominent because it's going to be very subtle in the background of the rectangle. Okay, so here I'm going to put it on the side here, and I would kind of rotate it. Um, hold down the Shift key and rotate it around by hitting Command T to transform, or just um, get it around. And then I'm going to go to my uh, opacity and bring this way down. Okay, I don't want this to be very uh, recognizable okay and then I'm actually gonna hit command C command F and then I'm gonna um, move them again and so and again you don't have to do that but you just need a uh, design so this one's gonna be even less 
um, noticeable, and maybe coming off the edge more. Okay, and then um, I have a little bit of space here, so I'm gonna put, um, let's see, always cool. Okay, so I'm gonna type in the font, always cool. Again, this is gonna be a little bit, um, down here and if you want to change your font a little bit don't get too crazy um, but you might want to change a, a little bit if you feel like hey it could use a little bit more because you, you actually won't even see it much it's just a, a little bit of emphasis you know kind of like that and make sure that these over over emphasis that okay um, for the design and I'm gonna stroke it just because I want a little bit thicker okay and I'm gonna uh, maybe or yeah, I like that thick uh, stroke right there. Now it says he's Mr. Drip, but how is he drip? Like he doesn't look like he's dripping at all. Uh, I'm gonna tilt him a little bit, um, and we gotta start dripping him. Actually, I'm gonna tilt him this way, and then I'm gonna do some drips to emphasize like who he is, because. You want to make sure that your character it's obvious like who he is so um, now what we're gonna do is uh, create some designs okay we we'll put some designs around him to make him like just make it more uh, artsy and making it pop so we're gonna create a new layer we're gonna put these uh, designs hey yellow <laughs> so this right here uh, you can see it uh, tells you what color that layer is. So this one's yellow like banana. Um, oh, by the way, um, do you guys know what is Beethoven's favorite fruit? Um, I think it's banana, -na, banana. -na. He really likes bananas, so hit okay. Uh, for my first designs, um, I'm just gonna like hide all of that and I'm going to show you a preview a little bit about the uh, designs that we're making. So here's some examples of some of the designs. I'm going to start um, and when you make your designs don't copy exactly mine. Um, you should have your own style and flair. You know change your colors and make sure oh these colors uh, they need to match your cooler theme. So notice I use these greens uh, for my character. Now I'm going to use the uh, complementary colors and I'm going to use at least these two. If I need a third color, that's fine. Just uh, try to find one that's in this category, and I'll use that as a third color. So uh, 51, 13, 36. So I'm going to go in here. Uh, 51, 13, 36. 13. All right, so I got my color, and then uh, if you you can, I'm gonna test that color, make sure it's correct, make sure it looks similar, and then what I'll do is I'll go to my uh, swatches and I'll create a new swatch, and this could be maybe my like D1 for the design color one, and then there's that, okay, and then I can make that color and so on. So for these designs, let's go ahead and make them. Uh, you're gonna first of all make circles. So I'm going to use the this tool and just make a lot of circles. Um, and it's gonna have like a cloud effect, I guess. And again, you don't have to put them exactly where mine are at all. I'm just doing random stuff, and hopefully they'll look good when it's done. Okay. So once you're done. Um, Making yours, you can. Um, highlight them and then go into the Pathfinder and choose Unite. So it's a uh, one object. Um, and again, when you create these, you don't have to have them one color. You can have Command C, Command F, uh, apply a really fat stroke to this. And again, choose a color that's um, similar. Shade, because we're using underlining color um, for those. And then notice, <clears throat> you can have a little bit of an emphasis 
um, for that. So okay, so then I'm gonna group those. Um, my next uh, shape I'm gonna make. <clears throat> um, so I made this one. Um, we can make the same shape but the, with circles. So um, just have a circle, have a stroke in there, and then just start making um, circles. But what you can do is not fill and have an extra thick stroke. Um, <laughs> that's way too thick. So maybe like that, or 20. You just got to play around with it. And then you can... <clears throat> Uh, so make a couple and then you can shift them around and just make sure that they connect each other in a uniform fashion but don't make the Olympic wing, uh, Olympic rings that would be kind of weird okay so again don't make them overlapping each other too much So notice there's the circles are uh, complete. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, command G to group those. <clears throat> now if you make these smaller or bigger, notice that um, here's the small and there's the big. So that's too much of a space. So you'd want to increase your um, stroke. Okay, so now I have that one. Um, you can make this one with an X. So this one's pretty easy. Just uh, one big circle one smaller circle and then I'm going to you can change your color and again um, you can change your colors a little bit but your main colors need to stay the same okay so um, I'm kind of diverting a little bit from my color scheme from my cooler so make sure like here 125 56 98 so I'm going to come in here to my color and I'm going to try that 125, 56, 98, 125, 56, and 98. Okay, there, I like that color. So I'm going to go ahead, create a new swatch up here, and call this uh, D2, for my design color 2. So I really like that one. So maybe I can hold on these colors and then uh, use my <clears throat> colors here. And then I can draw that cross with this. You just use the line tool and maybe I could just, oh, and use round cap. Go to your stroke and on the, on the uh, bar here on the right, um, there's square and then there's round cap. So choose round cap and I'm going to choose like a gray and of course, you can choose whatever you want. And I'm not going to choose 20, maybe 10. Um, um, just copy paste, uh, rotate it around, and then stick it right there. Okay. And again, uh, I'm going to increase my font thickness a little bit, make it look more fun. Uh, group it, and then you can resize it how you want. But notice that my strokes didn't change with it. So um, if that's the case, if you wanted to this uh, ratio of thickness of the stroke, you'd want to go to object and then expand and then OK. And that way, when we resize it, um, it stays the same ratios. OK, so that's a group. Um, you can make lightning really easily. Uh, for lightning, you know, you can just um, Show you lightning. Uh, so this is lightning in this case. So um, you can like click, click, just a bunch of clicks with different angles. And again, make sure you close it. That little circle closes it. And if you messed up a little bit, like I did, you can just hit the A tool. Um, to adjust it to what you need and then um, I'm going to use the um, 
uh, color swatch um, that color that I like okay and so and you can um, do different things to your shape uh, one cool 3d shape thing I wanted to show you was um, you can start with one shape like a circle and then you can maybe choose a different shape maybe like a star maybe a little bit bigger um, than the original then you can highlight both and select both go to uh, object and then path sorry object blend and then make okay uh, notice that it does it like it places one in the middle and so that's not what we want so we want to go back and go to object blend options and instead of smooth color specific steps and then you can choose the amount of steps uh, that you want to use okay and then what you can do is go to your blend tool and click and click and then it has a pretty cool effect I think and then you can hit A for Apple and then you can kind of change this too to get uh, the kind of shape that you want you know so I really like that tool so you can play around with that and again command C command F and then you can uh, st maybe stroke that with a uh, you want to stroke it you would need to go to um, object and then path sorry object and then expand and okay and then you can click it and then choose like the other color that you want to work with so maybe I want to use the darker color and maybe stroke it really big uh, like 30 and so and I can put that uh, behind it so now it's a cool shape. <laughs> Maybe yours will be a better shape, but if it doesn't turn out well like mine, then you can modify it. So um, again, just keep going. Again, like here, if you want to do the dripping cloud, you can um, modify your original cloud some. Maybe add a couple circles. Uh, but then here, you could just uh, add a couple lines with a round cap right here on your stroke on the right. Make sure it's on round cap. And then just draw hold on the shift key and draw it and you can add those two and then um, you can combine shapes so you just select all of them make it one on the pathfinder select unite um, to do it all select all and uh, stroke it at once so you can just play around and get um, what you need to on arrows that's pretty easy the line tool, uh, you can just use the pen or the line here. Um, so for the stroke here, you want to hit dash. Okay, so that way when you, with the pen tool, you click and click, it's dash. But here my stroke is way too big. So I'm going to drop it down to nine. So now when I stroke it, it's a little bit better and I can do a little bit creative uh, steps there. So uh, now we're going to make this fun uh, shape right here, these clouds with the lines. Uh, to do that, Go to rectangle tool and uh, judge as a thin line uh, and fill it with the color of your choice. Then uh, hold on the option key and duplicate that and move it over a little bit. Uh, you can choose how far over you want to get, but you want it fairly close. Um, now we're going to duplicate that action or repeat that action exactly. So you're going to hit command D as in dog and it's going to repeat. So we're going to keep repeating those for a while and then highlight them and commit hit command G to group and then we'll click our cloud uh, that we made before and you can change it if you want a different shape of a cloud and then we can come in here um, with our cloud and you can change the uh, angle of the uh, lines on your cloud as well so you're gonna select both and hit uh, make, control click make clipping mask okay so as you can see, it made a nice uh, pattern on our cloud. So, um, and if you wanted to make an outline of it, you could, um, you know, make a duplicate copy of it and put an outline and a lot of different ways you can um, option it. Also, even like this one, see, this is kind of dull. So I might want to like duplicate it and then like Command C, Command F as in frog, and then I would go to my Pathfinder and click on Unite. Um, all those shapes and then you can like maybe fill it with a different color and um, just make it a little bit different looking 
And then if you wanted to put a whole stroke around it, you could do that. Um, so a lot of different options that you can do to create your shapes. Uh, for the arrow, uh, P is for pen, and you're just going to do some clicks. So, um, so we can do uh, like click, click, click. <clears throat> and then click. And make sure you close it with a circle. Okay, it actually looks pretty cool with that thick stroke. So you have a 20 point thick stroke, that's why it has that effect. So, really cool effects you can do uh, with that. So, uh, again, continue making your designs the way you want, make them unique. Just make sure they're similar shades so they coordinate well um, with your th color scheme. When you're done with your designs, um, what you're going to do is uh, arrange how you're going to put them on your background. So I'm going to bring up my Mr. Men and my black rectangle. I'm going to lock those two layers right here so that it won't change. And now I'm going to take my designs and put it behind um, the rectangle. Okay. So now I'm going to um, arrange all my designs the way I want it to um, look. Okay. And uh, you can put some on the foreground. Uh, to do that, create a new layer. And maybe you're going to put like F designs. So that's like foreground. Um, and then you can put these kind of like on the um, foreground, but make sure you put um, that layer, you know, in the front of that. So I'm going to Command X to cut. Go to designs and command V to paste that on that layer and then you can put design so this one doesn't really work well here so I'm gonna actually command X go to my original designs layer command F and I'm gonna put that behind um, something more uh, command so maybe something more like this you could put and then angle it so <clears throat> you get more of a 3D-ish look. And again, you can duplicate stuff and uh, <clears throat> change the look and the angles of things. Uh, this is where your creativity should really start coming out and uh, patterning it. Now you can make your designs like really small and then put a lot of patterns. Um, sometimes that looks better. And then you can put them all like coming out of each other, you know, kind of like it's growing. But uh, the way you arrange it and the way the colors, see, you notice these colors don't really match well. So I'd want to put like a different color in between them, like this uh, maroonish kind of color, you know, to kind of break it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, have fun with creating your designs around it. When you got something you like and it coordinates well, and again, I would use, remember, the principles we learned like proximity. Um, unity, uh, progressive rhythm, alternating rhythm. Uh, these principles are key when uh, arranging your designs around it to make it look really well. Um, and there's a good ba you should have a good balance. Um, so when you're done, go ahead and uh, unhide your guides layer. So now we're going to work on our text um, in the bottom part. So think of a title for your movie, for your anime character. Um, and we're done with the top ones for now, so if you want to just hide those so it's less distracting, you can do that. Um, for me, I have Mr. Drip, so I mean, he won't drip unless it's hot, so I'm going to have my title as like something like Hot Summer. So I'm going to hit a new layer. Um, I'm going to call it layer um, uh, text. So this is where all my text is going to go, or topography. Um, so I'm going to put... Uh, uh, and then summer. You can decide if you want to do a long title or uh, uh, like here I'm breaking the line, like uh, two lines. Um, and I'm going to center it uh, right here. And so <clears throat> um, also you need to know where the exact center is. Uh, again, the, I, one of the quickest ways to do that is just make a 
rectangle that's uh, is exactly the size of the width. Shift and uh, click on your title as well, and then go to the uh, align um, window align. Oopsie, window align, and then hit center. Notice it'll um, and move it over so it centers it. Okay, and then I don't need that anymore, so I can get rid of that. Uh, for your text, choose like the color that you want to coordinate well. Again, don't uh, derail too much from the colors that you've already used, your color scheme. So you might want to go back to your cooler colors and check out, you know, maybe there's a different green that I want to use. So I can move this around and get, so maybe this color. So it's a 93, 125. I'm just going to say what, 95, 125, 95. So I'm going to go into my swatches. In color, uh, 95, 125, and 95. And once I got that, I'm going to hit new swatch. I'm going to call this maybe for my text. <clears throat> um, and you want to check out uh, some of your character. Like I would do some research and look at some movie posters to see like some something you want to do. Uh, so I'm going to try to do maybe a little bit like this Kung Fu Panda. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that good, but I'll do something similar. Um, so notice that the, it's too much of a line right here. So I'm going to change that. Um, I'm going to change that a little bit later. So first I'm going to apply my effect. Now there's a couple ways you can do your effects. First of all, one a common one is, and I'm going to change my font. Um, so there's a couple ways of doing that. Command C, Command F, and then change your color slightly. Um, and then I can send this Command Shift left bracket, and then I can kind of move it around there. So now it looks a little bit like a 3D-ish kind of thing. So I'm going to get my character palette, and right here I'm going to change this to a lower number, maybe 48, and bring that a little bit closer. Okay, um, you can type in the number as well to get exactly the way you want. If you want it stretched higher, I can go like 110. So I'm going to click on my text and go ahead and click on the um, warp options. Select the war warp effect you want. Hit preview. You can uh, adjust these settings to get just the way you want. Um, okay, and then once you get something you like, hit OK. Uh, then you sh should go to uh, Object Expand and hit OK for the default. And what that does is makes it more edible to use. So if I hit G for gradient, you want to apply you know, a gradient effect to that. Oh, and then you could just uh, apply a gradient effect um, to that. And then if you didn't like those colors, you can just drop in uh, maybe a green that you had used before. Okay. And notice you can't really see it too well, so you, you might want to do like a black. And then maybe I want to change my brush stroke to something a little bit more creative. Um, there. <clears throat> and then I can even select my back layer and make that bigger if I wanted to, to overemphasize it. Okay. All right, and so you can also use your warp options and move it out. You could warp it like to the side, to the other side. So you can choose how you want to do it. Um, all right, so once you got your title going, <clears throat> and for this, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so it's more prominent. Um, it's okay if it goes a little bit outside this line here. Um, just make sure you have room down here and it's not too much. Also, if you want to um, do some of your spacing, you can actually um, go in here, Command Shift G, and then you can click on your letters and move your letters uh, if you want to edit some of those um, individually. Okay, and when you're done, just highlight everything, Command G to group it. Um, now we're going to put our some text down here. Um, I'm going to use uh, 
they're a different font, more of a more common font. So I'm so I'm not using too many crazy fonts. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll still use Arial, but I'm gonna use maybe all caps or something. So maybe I'll just do bold, and then I'll put like coming summer 2012. Or maybe it's go, uh, coming farther away, so I'll change it to 13. Okay, so you can choose. Now, this is going to be all caps. So what you're going to do is go to your character, uh, more options, and then click on all caps. Okay, and I don't want this too big because we're all caps. Um, so I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. And I want the spacing to be more... Um, uh, right, so I'm going to click and uh, I can try to align it. And I don't want to stretch it. Notice how stretching it doesn't make it look as uh, good. So I'm actually going to come in here. Um, notice the stretching. <laughs> don't really like the stretching. So I'm going to click, click in here and set the tracking. And I can go maybe 75, um, 200, maybe 300. Yeah, I kind of like that. Maybe I don't want it like that black. Maybe I'll just choose maybe a lighter black. Maybe a little bit smaller. So just get something that you think. Uh, works and flows well together. Uh, now at the bottom, we're gonna put our kind of like our credits, uh, kind of like Rango, this movie poster. Um, at the bottom here, you see these um, credits here at the bottom, and notice how they're very thin. Um, so what you can do is you can install fonts. Uh, to match uh, this movie style. Uh, and what you can do is go to uh, thefont.com. So if we go and in thefont.com if you just search for uh, like movie or film Um, I just search for film and tall films. This looks uh, pretty similar if you take a look and notice it. So you can just download that and then uh, just drag those files into your font book. Just search for font book and on your spotlight on your Mac. Drop those in there and uh, you can just use those. For your uh, text, what you can do for your text is um, put like... Okay, so I can put, um, maybe I'm the producer, so I'll put uh, produced by Mr. Heil. And notice that we have our font here that we need to change. Um, so it's called tall, change that, tall films, okay. And so I'm going to change that back to maybe 100 for the spacing on the sides, maybe even less, because it kind of looks... Maybe 50 <clears throat> to make it match. Notice how it's, wow, it's almost touching each other. So maybe 25 or even 10. Okay. And so now you'll notice that it looks a little bit more realistic. But if you notice, um, for example, it says presented, present or production or film, um, some of the minor things are actually lower cased. Um, so for produced by, um, it's going to be a double stack. And to do the double stack, what you're going to do is go to character. I'm going to click here and hit, um, well, actually, first you need to go into your settings. Um, hit Command K, Command K as in kite. Um, go to type and click on here, show agent option. Okay. And then you'll hit OK. Then in your character option, you'll click here and go to Y2. Okay. Y2. 
And in uh, Y2 settings, you're going to go to um, lines and hit, you're going to have two lines. And for alignment, you're going to choose right alignment and hit um, OK. So now when you uh, highlight this, make sure you highlight only, not, not extra spaces. Um, you can go ahead and hit Y2 and notice that it um, <clears throat> and uh, combine them. But again, I need to go to my Y2 settings and choose right aligned and hit OK. So now it looks good. And I want to save this so that um, I can use it next time. And notice it has that space there. So I might want to um, uh, leave that there. Uh, so I'm going to keep these settings. So I'm going to highlight that. And then I'm going to go to Window, uh, Type, and I'm going to choose Paragraph Styles. Okay, and I'm going to hit New. And notice it has a new paragraph style. Okay, so right here, produced by Mr. Heil. So now you're going to make um, kind of make up some more credits for yourself. So let's say I can put like uh, Music by, and then I could put maybe. By Sam Lee. So you can choose some of your uh, people that you know to uh, fill in some of these credits. So I hit music by going here to hit my Y2, um, Y2 settings, right aligned. Okay. Um, maybe another one I could put um, sponsored by. And then uh, maybe a, your a company, like if you've started a new company or business, um, you can uh, put that. So if I put JB Designs. And if you want to do it quicker, you can use your paragraph styles. Uh, but I like to um, show you guys how to do it each time so it becomes more of a habit. You can really remember how to do your Y2 settings. So I'm going to hit right aligned and hit OK. So as you can see, um, getting a little bit better here. So I would do a couple more, at least fill the, the width. So you could do you could be a music by, produce by. Um, you can just go to the uh, for example, it says animated by, voice by, you could put a voice by your friend, edited by, written by, directed by, uh, co-produced by. There's a lot of these things um, below um, that you can put on here to make it look more movie style. So uh, once you get a style that you think, okay, this looks like a movie style font. And remember um, to use guides. So command R for your ruler. Um, and then make sure you don't go at least uh, half an inch from your border. There should be no text close to that to make sure you don't get too close. Okay. So when you're done, you can unhide it. Um, notice it looks, it looks like I got a little bit too close to that. So I might want to move all my text down a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and just rearrange your text. And again, use your topography rules. Uh, that's really important. Or you're choosing which fonts and spacing and all that, making sure it um, develops well. And then look at the overall structure. Uh, you can go with white background. Uh, if you think, yeah, it looks kind of plain. I'd like to do a little bit more to it to make it look more like a like a movie, um, something more like a movie style. Um, you can create like a new layer, put it as the furthest back layer, and then you can name that. Um, background or something and then you can go ahead and put that as your background and then uh, so yeah you might you can try like a, a more darker thing if you think it'll really bring out your colors uh, in this case I would need to take my text here and make it more white for coming coming 2000 somewhere in, in this one um, but yeah this looks more like a good spotlight if I didn't want it so much black you can you know adjust your gradient colors um, so it's not 
too far bad. Okay. Um, I could do something like this. You could use a lot of underlining color to make an emphasis. But I like the radial gradient. You could also, I guess, try linear gradient, but it might not look as good. Uh, of course, you would want to uh, draw it more vertical. You can do like that. So uh, if you didn't want it so prominent, you could take your opacity down. So it's just a little bit lighter. Notice that's a little bit better. I think that looks a little bit better than just a white. It kind of makes things stand out a little bit better. Um, so yeah, just it depends on what your color scheme is. So just make sure that you keep that in mind uh, when you're deciding how you want to do it. And it's not again the most the thing that you want to make sure it uh, shows up the most is your title information, and then your character, and then your this, and then your designs, and then your background color. Make sure they all mesh, and don't get too crazy on the colors. And make sure you have a good color scheme that works well together and meshes. So that's a little bit about an animated movie poster and a lot of things we learned and hope that went well for you.